All right. Good evening, everybody. Good night. Um, I have here Igor in the live stream yep. studio, which is going to talk about machine learning. So thank you, Igor, for participating in this conference. The stage is yours, my friend. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. Hello, everyone. In the next seven minutes, I will present to you the work that we've been doing on detecting and wind cyber threats using machine learning. In the introduction, I will remind you what is a credential attack, because we will be using this example throughout the presentation. Afterwards, I will explain the advantages of using machine learning for detecting threats compared to the conventional base rules approaches. Then I will present architecture of our solution, give examples of our work, and then finally conclude. So, OK, what is a credential attack? It's when a malicious actor gets access to the user credentials and is trying to use them when authenticated to protected websites. Why? Well, for example, to steal clients' data. So detection of such attack would be rule-based. If some IP generates too many hits, alert. However, what is too many? For source IP 1, 3 is too many. While for source IP 3, 10 is just right. If this is a public IP shared by a lot of customers. This is when machine learning comes in handy because it performs historical profiling of sources. Here you can see how Elastic Machine Learning component detected an anomaly, this dot in red. The color of the anomaly corresponds to severity of the deviation from the norm, from green being slightly abnormal through yellow, orange to red, meaning severe deviation from the norm. So talking about anomalies, let's see what the unsupervised machine learning score brings into the game. So now every anomaly will have two coordinates, one on the x-axis, anomaly's absolute measure. In our case, it will be number of hits per 10-minute bucket. By the way, all the numbers here are given just for illustrative purposes. And one on the y-axis, unsupervised machine learning risk or anomaly's relative measure. Let's divide the uh, entire plane into four quadrants and place an anomaly following our color scheme into every one of them. So if one is using rule-based approach for detecting threats, then one will be opening tickets for anomalies in quadrants one and four. But we, as we already discussed, if there are a lot of uh, clients using the same public IP, they will be generating tickets for false positives in the rules-based approach in quadrant four. This can be mitigated using unsupervised machine learning, because in this case, tickets will be open only for quadrants one and two. So combination of unsupervised machine learning and rules gives best results in quadrants one, two, and four. What about quadrant number three? Can we say something about it? Well, actually, that's the most interesting quadrant because our clients, most of our clients, and also advanced attackers are both there. For example, this orange dot could be a client that forgot their credentials and is trying to guess them. We see this in our environment quite a lot. And this green dot could be an advanced attacker that is using automation tools trying to stay undetected. So does it mean that we cannot differentiate between clients and advanced attackers? Well, good news, we can. But we need to do an extra step. We need to bring in security expertise and broad understanding of the security context into the picture by using supervised machine learning. So let's see how it plays out. So here is the architecture of our solution. For every type of attack, for example, for credential attack, we have a number of machine learning jobs that are tracking different type of anomalies in different type of logs. For example, cardinality anomaly in WAF logs will be measuring the number of unique distinct users being accessed from some IP. Then all these anomalies are fed into part two of the solution, which is the supervised machine learning part. Architecture of this one can be quite complex if one is one can, for example, use a deep learning with RNN architecture. And quite possible, we will have to go this way following the weaponization race with the attackers. However, at this day and age, I can confidently say we get good results by using classical machine learning approaches, for example, package in library scikit-learn. So step three of our architecture is backend and frontend, both Python-based. So uh, backend decides when to open tickets, and frontend, so that we developed in-house, it allows to monitor efficiently anomaly environment in our organization and triage anomaly promptly. So we will present um, the demo of our work in the security focused conference. Once the talk is scheduled, I will share details on Twitter and LinkedIn. 
So finally, we arrived at the result slide. Here you can see how our solution was able to detect an advanced attack that was spread again uh, across 200 IPs coming from 50 countries lasting 10 hours and potentially that could affect 10,000 of our users. Three days after attack, we verified that most of the IPs had been bad reputation on IP void. Here I want to make three points. First, we did not use any enrichment like IP void for detecting this attack. Second, several days after the attack, some of the IPs participating in the attack still had good reputation IP void. Third, all our other solution entirely missed this attack. With that, I conclude. First, machine learning allows to detect advanced threats that stay under the radar when using classical approaches. Second, our solution uses unsupervised learning by Elastic, ensemble learning by means of scikit-learn, Python back and front end to provide advanced yet intuitive environment monitoring and alerts triage. In-depth presentation for security specialists will be announced soon. With that, that's all on my side. Keep in touch and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you, Igor, for this amazing presentation.